spotted. The world of airsoft is an incredibly diverse and unique hobby with so many different options to make it fit your style. Just like Real Steel, Airsoft has hundreds of brands that make all kinds of guns, accessories, and kit. But with all these options, one may wonder where it all came from. In this series, I will explain the founding and history of several top Airsoft brands. In today's video, we will be going over the history of one of the biggest names in Airsoft, Tokyo Marui. In 1965, a small toy company called Tokyo Marui Toys was founded in Adachi, Tokyo by Iwasawa Iwao. They started out making toy gliders like the Astro Boy Glider and the Zero Fighter, which were a huge success selling over 300 million units, boosting this new company into the minds of young people across Japan. In 1966, the company moved to Ayase. There, they began development of hard plastic models like dinosaurs and sports figurines. Then, in 1969, the Apollo 11 moon landings were at the height of popularity, so Tokyo Marui released their Lunar Lander series. Following this uptick in popularity, they opened their own molding factory, which helped them produce high-quality plastic parts. In 1970, they created the Thriller series, a line of occult toys featuring the walking hand and walking neck, which were wind-up toys that glow in the dark. Tatsuo Iwasawa, the executive director, was afraid to even enter the warehouse these toys were stockpiled in. He believed there was a curse on the toys due to a gardening accident in which he cut his wrist and terminated the line. In 1971, they created a model of the Mat 1 Flyer from the Ultraman series, which had a special ability to fly from spring power. Over the years, they kept developing their expertise with their combination of precision plastic parts and internal spring force. You can see where this is leading up to. In 1978, the video game Space Invaders was released and changed the way people look toward entertainment. With so many people turning toward a screen, the action figures and toy cars slowly fell out of favor. Due to most of Tokyo Marui products being centered around movies and television at the time, once the public's interest in the show died down, so did the toy sales. They understood they needed to create something that wouldn't die with pop culture trends and make something totally unique to their brand. Tokyo Marui tried many ways to stay relevant, even to lower the price of the toys. They started researching for the hobby that could be played with more passionately than model cars. And with that in mind, they found model guns. At this time in the world, new gun laws made it so that model guns could only be made of plastic in Japan. Cheap model guns were being created by companies such as Mattel and the Japan Model Gun Collectors Association. Tokyo Marui saw this opportunity for a new market and began development on plastic spring-powered guns that had ejecting shells that held blast caps to make the pop noise. One of their first designs was a P38, which after much money and research, broke on the first shot. So they went back to the drawing board and started over. They created several more models with ejecting shells, which is impressive and ambitious even by today's standards. In 1979, they released their first model gun to the public, the 44 Automag, the same gun used by Dirty Harry in 1971. By 1985, the company formally decided to call itself Tokyo Marui, dropping the toys from the official name and opened more factories and distribution centers. In that same year, they released their first 6mm projectile airsoft gun, the Luger P08, which proved to be a huge hit due to the low price yet high quality for the time. Tokyo Marui's executive director Tatsuo Iwasawa stated, Kids save money little by little until they will finally buy the airsoft gun. For the kids, this airsoft gun is special. Even though the price is 1900 yen, if it is not durable enough and well specified, the customers will be in trouble. Although our development staff should experience difficulties in making the product, we focused our minds to produce a high quality and affordable product. In 1986, their first airsoft gun to utilize the gas blowback action was released, the Tokyo Marui Smith & Wesson M59. 
the airsoft gas blowback was adopted to replicate the action of a real gun, such as the power of firing and the slide being blown back. Before that, only the model guns, cap guns, had the blowback function. With the blowback function finally adopted in an airsoft gun, the fans went nuts. In this time, the sport of airsoft battles was beginning to pick up in Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. The primary replicas being made in this era were spring-powered, gas-powered, or HPA, which requires a hose connecting the gun to a large air tank, somewhat taking away from the realism many were wanting. Tokyo Marui's experience with remote control cars and model cap guns led them to create an invention that would change the airsoft world forever and launch innovations around the world. In 1991, Tokyo Marui released the first electric airsoft rifle, the FAMAS. Years earlier, they came up with the idea for an electronically cocked firing mechanism, but the technology at the time prevented a practical design from being made. But as parts get smaller and cheaper, innovation was bound to happen. Before the AEG, airsoft players were used to the bulky setup of the hose-connected HPA rifles, so the light, freeing design of the FAMAS took a while to catch on. The FAMAS was soon followed up by Tokyo Marui's Colt M16A1, which had a promotional video showcasing the advantages of a lighter weight, untethered gun in a pretty funny fashion. As you can see, the gas guns of the past needed pumped up tanks and old spring-powered magazines that needed a speed loader to refill. The AEG allowed players to continually fire on full auto from a battery that lasted much longer than a can of gas. The new AEG high cap magazine allowed players to wind a key on the magazine to refill the main feeding line while still shooting, preventing the long hassle of taking the magazine out. This video also introduces an invention ahead of its time, the tracer unit, which allows players to see where the BBs are flying and landing. With all of this incredible technology hitting the market, many other brands wanted to catch on and started to produce their own electric airsoft guns, such as JAC and Marushin but none could meet the performance of Tokyo Marui. During this time in Japan, there was no legal standard for the power of airsoft guns, and many were complaining about the pain of high power gas guns. Tokyo Marui was criticized for its low power and range, but that only furthered Tokyo Marui's desire for improvement. In 1993, Tokyo Marui released the FAMAS SV, which featured a hop-up system, which by having a little tab in the chamber, put backspin on the BB as it exits the barrel using the Magnus effect to send BBs farther than ever while still having a safe power to it. With all these changes to the sport of airsoft, many new players joined the hobby and Tokyo Marui's products skyrocketed in popularity. Even still, players desired the realism and feel of gas blowback systems the AEG didn't have at the time. So Tokyo Marui went into further development of gas pistols, releasing their Desert Eagle in 1995. By now, Tokyo Marui had such a large grip on the airsoft market, other companies started producing Marui clones or replicas that were very similar to and had cross-compatible parts with Tokyo Marui products. In 2003, Tokyo Marui introduced the VSR-10, a bolt-action sniper rifle which allowed for ease of use and high accuracy. Previously, bolt-action airsoft rifles were extremely difficult to prime, but with Tokyo Marui's new support ring technology, it became much easier for everyone at an affordable price. The 2000s saw the introduction of the Airsoft Electric Pistol, or AEP, which included the Glock 18C and Beretta M93R. 
Their innovations in small, complex gearboxes allowed them to develop machine pistols such as the MP7 and VZ Scorpion. Many brands wanted to cash in on the success of Tokyo Marui and created similar products at a fraction of the quality, leading to thousands of knockoffs flooding the market at a cheaper price than Marui. New hobbyists would buy these products to save a dollar and be disappointed with the quality, leaving them with a bad impression of Airsoft. To deal with this huge wave of competition, Tokyo Marui was again forced to innovate. In 2007, they released the AK-74MN rifle with their all-new recoil shock engine. This was the combination between AEG and gas blowback everyone was waiting for, the electric blowback. Other companies again rode their coattails, creating electric blowback systems, but Tokyo Murray had the upper hand by patenting their designs to stay ahead, so other companies just had the blowback bolt system with no recoil. During this time, Japan released new laws controlling the power of airsoft guns. Tokyo Marui, being a leading brand, cooperated fully with these changes and focused on their recoil designs to offer players a fun, realistic system since many players could no longer make the modifications to increase power. Tokyo Marui also introduced in 2009 their AEG Boys series, which was comprised of low-power rifles and handguns meant for younger people, as those under 18 in Japan could only have airsoft guns that shot at or under 120 FPS. Throughout this time, Tokyo Marui never gave up on its original ideas of toy creation, making train sets, RC helicopters, and even an RC tank that shoots airsoft BBs. Though by now, their name is more synonymous with airsoft than RC toys. The 2010s saw the company push for development in gas blowback systems, specifically rifles. With main development on pistols and SMGs, there was hesitation about full-sized gas systems. A Tokyo Marui developer stated, To enlarge a gas blowback engine is not easy. It's different from enlarging an AEG gun. Generating strong kickback while shooting at a long distance, you just need to increase the gas consumption. However, to stabilize the round cycle, you must decrease gas consumption. It's difficult to decide the balance. Also, once the kickback becomes stronger, there is need to enhance durability of the parts. In 2012, they released the Gas Blowback MP7, which helped them develop the technology for bigger, fully automatic gas firing mechanisms. Also introduced that year was the M320A1 grenade launcher, which used a 40mm shell that shot many BBs all at once. Bruh. A new technology being investigated by Tokyo Marie was the gun sound, a feature in the new VSR model that, when shot, produced an audio of a real gunshot from a speaker. In 2014, Tokyo Marui announced plans for their first gas blowback rifle, the M4A1 MWS, but the engineering team delayed the release to work on improving durability and function. In 2015, it saw release to the market. In 2015, Tokyo Marui made headlines with its new airsoft electric shotgun, the AA-12, Boasting an impressive 10 rounds per second and 3 BBs per shot out of 3 separate barrels, this beast sent enemies running for cover. As you may have learned, Tokyo Marui continues its streak of excellent products and genius innovations that drove the world of airsoft into what we know today. It's certain that if Tokyo Marui didn't step into the world of airsoft, our selection today would be vastly different. All we have to do now is sit back and keep our eyes and ears peeled for whatever the future may have in store for Tokyo Marui. I'm sure whatever is next will be just as game changing as the high cap magazine. I want to thank all of you for watching my videos and showing me support. This is a new style of video I thought I would try out and it was a lot of fun to make. I'm sure I got some things wrong or may have missed some important moments, but I feel this is a good timeline of how they started to where they are today. Big thanks to popularairsoft.com for a lot of the information in this video. I'll provide links to all my sources at the end and in the descriptions. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and let me know what you think the next big thing from Tokyo Marui should be. As always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Peace!